Let's begin with section B of paper one. As we have discussed in the section A, most of the questions are already covered in our course. So uh, that is what we would be focusing on. The idea here would be an outline. What should be included? What should not be included? And most importantly, a lot of students come and ask whether uh, we need to include diagram with every question. So that's not the case. Wherever required an app, you have to put it. Otherwise, it's not a compulsory thing. That that diagrams examples are must for each of those for this paper specifically the second section that we have covered it is good if you have good statistics with you for example the first question itself if you have India's statistics with uh, food uh, with the food grain security reserves the food grain reserves with India and the growth of population you can actually explain with the data very well so statistics is something that we focus on now you might answer and ask where do we get this statistics from the answer is very simple be a regular reader of Yojana and Kurukshetra these magazines have most of the content which are contemporary and even if you do not remember a lot of data a data pre -independent independence, post-independence or pre-liberalization, post-liberalization would be more than sufficient to answer question like this. So you have to first identify in this question the causes of food insecurity in India, how population growth is directly related to uh, the issue of food insecurity, uh, the status of food security over the years, how it has changed and what are the various initiatives which have been launched by the government. Now the initiatives could further be classified under the state initiatives and the central initiatives and finally mention what have been the challenges to the issue of food security in India. India is not just one of the nations which is fighting with this issue of food security but there are other nations as well and you can also give in a comparative study of a country like Cuba versus India, a country like uh, Venezuela versus India and the countries which have been the producers of food grain versus the countries which are relying more mostly on imports for the food uh, resources for themselves. The next is identify the cause and the effect of energy crisis. Now, what are the measures? When it comes to measures, definitely some of the best measures would be the possible solutions would be re, uh, reducing the usage, the reducing the wastage, focusing more on renewable sources of energy, uh, moving from uh, the CFL to LEDs as one of the schemes that the government has released, focusing on new technologies, development and technologies for control of light energy simulation would be one of the other ways so we all know how are some of the important effects and measures which are imp uh, importantly included but we also focus on the cause at the same time now cause can be explained either as overconsumption, misuse wastage uh, then uh, poor infrastructure some of the major accidents that happen and wastage occurs because of that uh, poor distribution system the distribution system is not a streamlined and there has been a lot of wastage in the distribution grids uh, wars attacks instability and internal conflicts are some of the reasons which attribute to it so those were some of the major points that you need to discuss the next question is mobility versus migration a very very important topic i can simply say migration is a subset of mobility which is a bigger term initially the term used was mobility but migration actually tends to explain when you are temporarily or permanently residing into a area mobility does not include that stay with respect to time and therefore mobility and migration are little different the next is the next section of the question focuses on causes and consequences of migration now migration uh, causes and consequences we all know but here what we need to understand is specifically what is asked is rural to urban so don't take into account rural to rural migration and the causes related to the same uh, now when it comes to causes, you can further classify the causes under three heads, economic, social and political as we have explained in the previous section as well. So once classify it and then reclassify it. So for example, once you classify the economic, social and political class, uh, the causes within economic, you can explain it is because of the career options, better wages, higher perks, uh, the disguise and unemployment that occurs in the village areas. So that would further come under economic. Similarly, under social, we would have points related to better opportunities for growth. We would have points related to better health care, better educational facility, uh, movement because of uh, 
institutional changes because of family movement uh, better opportunities for recreation political changes can be due to uh, certain uh, migration which has occurred due to disturbed conditions within the regions now uh, assam jammu kashmir are some of the states to quote here then we also have another important cause which is environmental cause this could be related to uh, disaster or any natural calamity which had happened into a region it could be erosion landslide flood drought famine so those are the ways under which you classify this answer the next question is very very important if you understand the language of this question you would be at a glance able to answer what you need to write here so the statement says where economic growth is sustained over longer period of time it in insights work to work its incidence work towards a progressive integration of a space economy so what does it mean it focuses on how economic growth has been growing uh, has been moving forward and as the growth moves or as the economy develops there is integration of the spaces which are closer to one another so what you need to explain here is simply the core periphery model so friedman's core periphery model is something that has to be explained here and that we have covered separately in the lecture the idea is with the language of the question you should be able to understand what actually is asked and how you need to express it so a good example that you can quote here is the golden triangle in south america and how brazil became the core and amazon was the periphery and then the three core cities in brazil which finally evolved and develop the next is the note on von thune in agricultural location again we have covered this in the uh, lecture but the most important section that most of the questions nowadays asked is in relation to the present context now when it comes in relation to the present context the things have changed a lot because this was a model that was adopted during the time when perishable commodity was a big issue now with refrigeration the perishable commodities can be stayed for a longer time and also transportation can take place through the cold chain storage towards longer distances so uh, this concept actually has been modified over the years and next important thing is with development of air uh, transport air freight again uh this theory does not remain that valid in the present day scenario however you have to explain the model and then you can as you uh, think so i have taken some of the points which explain that this theory is not that relevant in the present day context you can also support the theory and explain how it has been relevant so your views is something that should attain or that should be uh, well cited with examples to explain the theory again the next is the malthus theory and the neo malthus theory again we have covered malthus theory and the post malthus theory in numerous ways and the different theories in different classes so you can refer those on the channel the idea is we have to compare and contrast these theories now malthus theory and neo malthus mainly uh, focused or differentiated on the views of contraception uh, the neo malthus theory focused on uh, ways through which birth control became becomes very very necessary however malthus theory focused on self control so that was one of the major gaps or differences also malthus focused on food shortage however neo malthus theory talked about the environmental concerns focused on green revolution and how food shortage can be actually uh, checked so there was again a difference between the malthus and the neo malthus theories so that is what you have to explain here and malthus ways so first explain what is the malthus theory then the neo malthus scholars and their concepts and then the finally the differences as we have cited the next question talks about land degradation here we need to explain how it has been a threat to productivity and sustainable resource management you have to explain this question from examples with examples so the good example i would say is take an example of indira gandhi canal indira gandhi canal is one of the important examples because water logging and desalination has actually degraded the existing land structure very significantly also we can cite examples of desertification in the areas post the arab 
Kavli's, where we have seen uh, the impact of desertification increasing, uh, dryland areas and how dryland areas are increasing. So in this uh, diagram, as you can see, we have cited some major issues, for example, water erosion, water logging scenarios, uh, issues related to wind erosion, issues related to salinization and alkalinization, uh, the barren rocky areas and the stony waste areas. So those are some of the categories under which you can classify it and then explain the probable measures. The probable measures could be uh, how do we actually control the issue of soil erosion in these areas either through graded bunding, contour bundings or engineering structures that can be explained and have been done in one of the separate lectures. The next is in the modern world most of the frontiers have been replaced by boundaries. Explain the reasons for the same. Now here in this question firstly we need to explain what are frontiers, what are boundaries. You can check the class again for uh, the topics that we have mentioned here. The most important thing is the boundaries actually are the point of conflict of interest and therefore most of the frontiers are now being replaced by boundaries because frontier is a physical and a moral concept. However, uh, boundaries are a geographical, a physical limit, a physical limit to the sovereignty of the region and therefore uh, most of the world is now switching towards boundaries. They are trying to have a specific influence. Uh, this could be either due to ethnic differences, religious differences, cultural differences and uh, the division or the proportion of the land and therefore uh, we need to understand how these things have changed over the time. The next topic is focusing on urban resilience mainly for sustainable development with respect to India. So we have the four things that we have taken into account here, the awareness, coping, adapting and transforming which is the ECAT uh, curriculum that we focus on for resilience of urban centers. Now uh, first First of all, for questions like this, we need to explain what is a resilience framework, why natural disasters, human actions need to be taken into uh, consideration before focusing on the sustainable development of an urban area. Then we also need to identify how many million plus cities are there, the causes or the risk behind the growing cities and their sustainability issues, the sustainable development uh, agendas, the sustainable development goals, which focuses on risk reductions, mainly uh, focusing on the vulnerabilities for the poor within the urban areas. So that is again one of the major uh, focus that need to be brought. Uh, then bring in some of the schemes. So some of the good schemes that you can explain is the Amrit scheme. Again, we have covered a smart city, uh, the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, the National Disaster Management Plan. So those are some of the examples and the schemes that you can mention with this question. The next is the dynamics of industrial location in metropolitan cities and how this has been changing. So this map actually focuses on the industrial centers. We have focused on uh, four types of changes in the industrial location. We call these as either the seasonal change, the cyclic change, the secular change or the structural change in the industrial location and then we analyze how and where these industries can be actually located. Now uh, we can bring in various theories. Uh, Weber's theory is one of the most standard theory when we focus on industrial location and explaining that but when it comes to the dynamics we need to explain how economic liberalization post 1990 changes have brought in financial and industrial liberalization in India. So with the economic liberalization and financial liberalization, we have more of outsourcing centers, more of call centers, more of BPOs, also knowledge corridors, knowledge industries have established and these are the industries which are footloose industries. They do not require a source of raw material to be established to establish themselves and therefore have higher mobility. So uh, the next industrial revolution that we focus on that is industrial revolution 4.0 or automation again needs to be brought into light with the idea of changing patterns of industrialization in India and how uh, employment and output share would actually change. The next is gender equity and equality and importance for balanced human uh, development. Now. Here, what you need to focus on is how female literacy 
has changed over the years uh, the employment ratio in the rural areas and urban areas have changed the literacy patterns have changed now all these information that i am trying to explain here should be brought about with statistics that's the best way if you can represent that in your answer copies if not even if you can bring in a one line or two line of occupational inequality how it works how the proportion of females employed in the agriculture sector versus the service sector varies and then focus on various schemes the various schemes that have been brought the inequalities in the field of education the political and the rural uh, section the uh, the political the economic section and then the various plans of the government which focuses on uh, let's say the various schemes for example the matritva sahyog scheme then the maternity benefits then we focus on uh, beti bachao beti padhao uh, talking about the employment generation so those are some of the schemes and the efforts you need to bring into account also state wise initiatives can be explained if not in detail at least you can cite examples from one or two state to explain how equity has been actually brought into account and down to earth was an excellent example because uh, this down to earth we had one of the case studies from telangana where uh, significant developments have been seen by one of the ngos working in the suburbs of telangana uh, to bring in uh, Uh, women out of their existing networks the next is the mackinder's theory and its concepts now again we have covered this class uh, this topic elaborately in our video what you need to explain here is how it changed after the wars so you have to explain the original mackinder's theory the modifications that were brought in 1919 and the 1943 modifications so modifications are what are asked in this question so the original mackinder's theory along along with the 1919 and 1943 modifications are required so don't miss those the next question focuses on the population transition uh, in context of the fertility decline and the socio economic development now here first of all this question talks about not just india but the world population transition so you can classify it either as developed nations developing nations or a north south uh, divide we can say and then explain how fertility decline is linked directly with the socio economic development as the socio economic development increases the proportion of children actually decreases and that has been registered even in china recently so uh, we can uh, actually put in examples from countries like china uh, european nations where we have seen negative uh, growth rate in contrast to african nations where very high growth rate have been seen and this is directly proportional to the socio economic development so that is something which is asked in this uh, question the last question focuses on human ecology is a study of mutual relationship between people and their environment and here you need to explain it in terms of both natural environment as well as the social environment and the various ecological concepts so actually what you need to bring into account is the ecosystem the components the biotic and the abiotic components of the ecosystem along with the social system where you need to incorporate knowledge population values and social organization and create a interchange of services between the two the flow of energy material and information how interactive developments can take place green spaces within community uh, pastoralism can be increased intensive agriculture can be increased more uh, people could be brought closer to the nature concepts like deep ecology can be introduced here so those are some of the major uh, highlights that are to be included in questions like this and uh if you want to bring in an introductory idea here you can explain how uh the geographical thought evolved from determinism to possibilism and now when we focus on the further developments we see the role of human as a very very important uh, uh, element and then the barrows aspect in human ecology needs to be explained here so those were some of the important things and the important outlines that we have covered for these topics we would be covering many more interesting topics and paper 2 for your upsc geography in the next analysis uh, the links for the detailed video coverage are available in the description below wish you a very good luck stay tuned